Man, I, my message is this. If you believe in something, first of all, if you don't believe in it, who else is going to believe in it? You're right. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's your boy, Teflon John, coming to you courtesy of the Auto Reinvention and the Infinite Media brand. Today is a very special day. We got my man in the building, Andre Kendrick. Andre, the man, the myth, the Lynchburg legend, Drake can talk. Kendrick is here. So I just want to um, give him a moment just to introduce himself to the audience. Yeah, my, uh, like John, first of all, John, thanks for having me on the show. Anytime, man. Again, my name is Andre Kendrick uh, from Lynchburg, Virginia. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. Okay, so let's like so so I think a lot of people know about Andre Kendrick, you know the EC Glass legend, the Lynchburg legend. So who was Andre Kendrick? Like, how did you work your way up into, you know, a Virginia Tech's, you know, standout uh, as 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 well as being a Lynchburg legend that you are now? Well, I mean, I don't know about Lynchburg <laughs> legend, but we'll go with it. But um, yeah, you know, um, I mean, it started like when I was small, like. Five years old. I uh -huh. remember my first Super Bowl I watched was uh, the uh, Redskins, the Washington football uh, team. But back then they were the Redskins yeah. versus the Raiders. That's when I fell in love with the Raiders, fell in love with football. And pretty much, man, like all my life, ever since I was five years old, had been playing football, started all the R.S. pain, you know. And some of my early training came from my dad and my brothers. God bless the dead, my brother Bird and my brothers Punkers. And, um, and, you know, they – Always one worked out with me, play. We didn't know we was working out, but you know it was. You know, I don't even think they knew they were working me out. But you know, we used to do little different drills yeah. around the house, and I used to be like, you know, when they ain't want to play with me, my life, my dad wasn't around. You know, my brothers didn't want to play with me. Younger, like mom, no, they bird punk, and they won't play with me. So uh -huh. you know, she'll make them play with me. But you know, it got me better. They learned. You know, they taught me a lot of things that I was able to use in life. And you know, so basically. Like I said, I started at R.S. Payne at five years old, and I just worked my way all the way up. A um, little troublesome, young, just a little young, rebellious kid, nothing really crazy. Um, when I was younger, got kicked out of public schools. Mm -hmm. uh, Mom, dad sent me to LCA for two years. Best thing that ever happened to me in my life as far as, you know, seeing that things were bigger than Lynchburg, Virginia. You know, yeah. there's folks over there, I mean, they took me everywhere, they, you know, far as all the way up to Bangor, Maine, right on the Canadian border. So, you know, all the way up the um, coast, uh, the Long Island, all of them. So they just showed me different things. You know, also I learned, you know, even though my parents, you know, I went to church all the time. Parents knew, I knew who God was, but I had a real chance to, like, know who God was, you know, because yeah. <clears throat> every day it was Bible. You yeah. know, we had a Bible class, so, you know, I learned about the Bible and stuff like that. So, you know, that was probably the best thing that ever could have happened to me in my life at that point. Came to EC class, and, you know, the rest kind of was history. The rest was history. So, I know once a coach, always a coach, right? So I'll see, I seen my, uh, I was at the Appomattox game watching my son play, seen one of my Paramount coaches, mm -hmm. Reffin. Yeah. And I still call him coach. Who is the guy or who is that coach? That really told you, look, look, man. Like if you if you if you stay the course, like 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 you can do something special. Well, I mean, it's a couple of people. You know, um, first started off when I was at LCA. You know, I, I eighth grade, Scott Allen was the uh, well, well, Lewis was the coach when when I was over there. Mm -hmm. Scott Allen, he was one of those coaches that saw something in me. He wanted to implement the option, and he every day in school he was like. Next year, your year as a freshman. Next uh -huh. year, your year. Not thinking, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna be there, but I, you know, I ain't really know. So, I always was a running back. Uh, my eighth grade year, one of my best friends, Trent Richardson, he got hurt, so they put me at quarterback. So I started playing quarterback. That's what Scott Allen discovered that I could play quarterback and things of that nature. But fortunately, but fortunately, I went yeah. to class and Mike Berry, God bless the dead, Mike Berry was the one um, that told me like. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're going you to play um, before your uh, senior year. I mean, you're going to play before your sophomore year. And I was just like, nah. Yeah. You know, so that year I played ninth grade because then we had ninth grade. Yeah. Played ninth grade, JV all in one week and varsity all in one week. So once the season was over, you know, I got moved up to varsity. And it's a, it's a story that, I, that I'll tell later about it. But, you know, my freshman year, 
Glasgow to the state championship um, game, playing against Allen Iverson. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad told me the night before, like, be ready. They're going to put you on. Like, Pops, a state championship game, man. I'm a freshman. You know, I ain't getting no love at the quarterback position. Yeah. And sure enough, <laughs> right around that day, right at the end of the second quarter, they called me in the game. And I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. But um, it taught me some lessons further down the road in college because, you know, I kind of still had that um, – you know, I really didn't understand what it was to be, like, prepared. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. – everything was God-given talent, you know what I'm saying? God-given yeah. talent, heart, chip on my shoulder because I always was the shortest, but I was thick, yeah. you know, and, and I was a dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was just it, you know. So I always had that, like, no, nah, you better go talk to that other one over yeah. there. I ain't the one, I'm, you know, so, yeah. you know, that – Um, but, yeah. And then, you know, once, you know, Bo Henson, once he starts hearing and seeing and coming to the North uh-huh. Bay games – he was like, yo, you can't pull me this out. You the quarterback of the future. Okay. And, you know, mind you, I mean, I'm a freshman, and I still got guys that's in front of me, you know, that's played the game, um, that was playing quarterback. So, yeah, that that's how I went. And Coach Henson, he just gave me that green light as a sophomore, and then that we went from there. Okay. So when, so when you look at being like a young black male, because I remember playing sports, and a lot of times we're not given the credit of how we lead, right? Mm-hmm. So could you talk about the challenges of – Quarterback being a leader by by default, but leading people that were older than you. Well, see, it was it was it's weird because like as a freshman, you know, I looked up to him, and you had Cornell Brown, high school All American, Carlos Tab. He was All State, Jermaine Ab. I mean, the team was loaded. Yeah. I mean, it was loaded with with guys as a freshman, and then you know some of those guys came back as a sophomore, and it didn't really hit me dawn on me until. Like the I playoff game against Stonewall Jackson, and I never forget it. Jermaine Abbott, you know, I I had scored six touchdowns, which was a record, yeah. a playoff record at the time. And Jermaine Abbott came to me and, and just and looked at me. He was like, "What you doing out there?" They used to call me Willow. Uh-huh. The, the, yeah. the, 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 what you yeah. doing out, Willow and Pack? What you yeah. doing out there? I'm like, man, I'm trying to win this game. He said. Tonight you turned into something, man. You turned. You gonna lead this team. I never forget them words. Like Jermaine Abbott, shout out for giving me that encouragement because like he was the man. He was the uh, Sean Taylor before Sean Taylor. Gotcha. So with okay. all that stuff that I mean, he was that guy. He was like the leader of the team, and it's almost like he passed the torch on at that moment. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So how do you how do you think uh, sports has helped you develop and and into the person that you are today? Like giving back to the community. And working with the kids. Well, when when you went out dealing with that, you know, it, it's, it's weird because, like, you know, you learn all these skills, mm-hmm. leadership skills, working together skills. You learn all that stuff, you know, subconsciously almost. You know, when you got people that's looking at you to be the one, be the guy, and yeah. stuff like that, you got to respond. But I think the the biggest, one of the biggest things to me um, that I learned and why I'm who I am today is kind of like a couple of different parts to it is because, like, in high school, my high school senior year, now mind you, all this whole time, you know, Andre, 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 yeah, Andre, you, you this, you that. Then my senior year, I found out fake love. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I yeah. found out what it was, like, my, my eligibility up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't from Coach Henson or none of my coaches. It was more from administration. You know, it was almost like, you know, we sick of you <laughs> almost to that point. But, you know, uh-huh. my coaches and, you know, I had some great teachers. I mean, it was a point where, you know, my senior year, I had all my grades. Grades never been an issue. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Grades never been an issue or anything like that. But it was just like my senior year, I was going to coast. You know, I had like a couple of student assistant classes, some classes that, you know, was just a pastime. And yeah. two of them student assistant classes was was with Coach Henson. So he kind of let me move around freely as I wanted to. So, but, you know, thanks. Shout out to Michelle Penberger, um, Phyllis Hicks, um, Betsy Garrett, Jay Sales, Ethel Reeves Coles, because I didn't have enough credits. And the thing about it is, is that I had a class that they just threw me in. It was a physics class. Didn't need it. They just threw me into the class. Uh-huh. Went to the um, my guidance counselor. Another thing, I had four different guidance counselors in three years. So I went to my guidance counselor, and then she was like, well, we can't put you nowhere else. You need a class. I'm like, huh? And so went to administration. Administration was like, well, you just have to sit in it. And I'm like, cool, all right, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I went through that. 
Didn't need the physics class. Barely, well, I would say I failed the class. Put it that. I failed the class. And, you know, it was pretty much like, didn't nobody want to help me. But those ladies, Miss Gary, Miss yeah. Hicks, Miss uh, Carees Coles, Miss Berger, Coach Sales, Coach Henson, yeah. you know, those folks right there spotted it and was like, no. Nah. They knew what was going on. But as a kid, I didn't understand it, but they knew what was going yeah, on. Yeah, they could see it. Pulled me in, got me with the classes that I needed, that one class that I needed, and boom, everything happened. But that's the, you know, that was the moment when I felt like, dog, whew, after you, they, they use you up, they don't need you yeah, no more. Yeah. And then, like I said, it wasn't any of the coaching staff or nothing like that. It was more administration. Um, you know, just kind of like I don't know what the deal was. But, yeah. I mean, you know, I felt like, you know, I represented EC Glass well. Mm -hmm. You know, our games was packed. Even the, I mean, like I tell kids today, like y'all don't know football. Yeah. Packed stadiums. Yeah. I mean, we could be playing Franklin County. We could be playing anybody. Yeah. And both sides of the stadium packed. Heritage and Glass. Yeah, you you're talking about in. both sides all the way to the day. I mean, still people rocking around. So, you know, it that um, uh, you know, that thing, that right there, you know, um, those folks put me in a good position. So, yeah. Yeah. So. So what lesson, because you know we got the NIL deals, right? Yeah. You got a lot of kids now with social media. Mm -hmm. So what lesson did you take from that 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 the kids need need to learn about? You know what I'm saying? Is it kind of like 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 Mike Jones? Back then they didn't want me. Now yeah. I'm hot, they all on yeah. me. So what so what lesson could you give the the kids now that may be at that star star's status? Man, just never sell yourself short. You know what I'm saying? Um just know that people are gonna use you for what they, they can use you for. Um, one minute, you, you you just, you know, you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then when they can't use you no more, sometimes, I mean, you know, it get there. But, you know, I've seen and dealt with a lot of kids that have some strong support. And then I've dealt with some kids that don't have that support. Yeah. So, you know, I'm big on that. But, again, like I was saying, you know, once I found out what fake love was, yeah, it just kind of changed my whole demeanor. Because I was the type of guy that, like, you know, I wanted to please everybody. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? My mom, you know, I had four brothers from my mom's first marriage. Um, you know, a couple brothers got in trouble. And I just got tired of seeing my mom, like, like my mom fed up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I was always problems. I was like, Yo, I'm not going to be a mom. I told her, I said, I'm not going to be the one that put you through nothing like that. Yeah. So my whole life, it was just straight air. Like, after I got back into public schools, I was scared to even get into a fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it was just like, it meant that much to me. I just hated to see her suffer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, you know, I, once I found out how, how things work and stuff like that, it kind of, you know, I got to college and, um, you know, I got there through the grace of God, thankful thankful for, you know, what he, him getting me there. So once I got to college, you know, you mind you, I'm the AAA state player of the year. Yeah. You know, and this is back when it was just single A with two divisions, double A with two divisions, three. So it was like you really had to be, yeah, you know, you that, that deal. <laughs> you know, so when I get to Virginia Tech, you know, and my dad used to say a saying that I tell kids all the time, you're a big fish, you know what I'm saying? But now you're still a big fish, but pond just got bigger. Yeah. And so once I realized what that was, because like the first couple of years in college, man, I was, you know, I came out with a strong showing. I was, you know, I had a, we had a scrimmage and this was when, you know, Virginia Tech had that monster defense, you know, yeah. like my first year with Cornell Brown and, you know, all those guys like that. They had a monster defense, man. And I had a heck of a, um, I had a heck of a summer. Like I went out there, worked, we had a couple of injuries um, at the running back because I got recruited as a DB. Yeah. So I had worked my way up on the DB side. Uh -huh. You know, I had worked my way up and then, you know, they was coached came to me and was just like, if any other position besides corner, what would you want to play? I said, running back, receiver. Yeah. He said, running back? I said, coach, I'm going to tell you like this. I just want to get on the field. He shook his head, put me on the shoulder. All right, the next day I'm in the running back's room. Yeah. So I go out there, we scrimmaging, you know, we, I'm set, I'm on the second, third team, so we're going against the dogs. Mm -hmm. you know, I scored a couple touchdowns, you know, and they was, you know, and then the last scrimmage of the season, before we get into regular season, I sprained my ankle. So, you know, they red shirted me. And that was a kind of a another adjustment right there as far as, you know, because I was always touching the ball every offensive yeah. play. I, and, and, like, that's what I tell kids today, and I had to tell my son that. Like, dog, uh -huh. your, biggest, your biggest thing is 
not touch gonna be being able to not touch the ball every play. Yeah. And being able to just be able to adjust and do a different job or what's asked of you. So that's gonna be your biggest issue. So that was one of my issues, just like, man, I'm touching it every play in high school and now I'm barely getting any love. So yeah. but you know, that was something that um, you know, I kinda looked back at as a, a strong point and kind of turn things around for me. Yeah, so so how does a kid adjust? Because I've, you know, I know kids like, you know, like Trey Loing and a lot of guys mm-hmm. from around this area and in the Lynchburg area that, you know, you go from starting three to four years max, you know, like like my son, and, you know, you're starting and John, you know, yeah. John Penix and these guys. How was that transition when you go to freshman and you may not play as much? Like how was that transition going from the man to – now I gotta, oh, now, it's a, it's now a, I gotta put that work in. That's what mental toughness come in at. And you know, that's one thing what I do in my training, I preach in my training, everything ain't gonna be right, it ain't gonna be what you want it to be. A lot of times these coaches gonna try you just to see how far they can push you. Yeah. Cause you know, at the end of the day, any coach, they want somebody that's going to be able to fight through it, be mentally tough, get through it. I tell people it's 80-20, 80% mental, 20% physical. They want somebody that they, they're going to push you to the limit to see if they can rely on you in the end. So, you know, one thing that I would tell like a, a freshman or something coming in that's been a star all their life is just be patient and yeah. keep doing the same thing you're doing, but do it on a higher level. Gotcha. Um, Cause like I said, you it's a whole new ball game. Instead of, 200 girls, 300 girls, you got 20,000 girls, yeah. which is a distraction. Yeah. And then you got school. Then you got a rigorous practice schedule where it's nothing like you ever been before. Everything time, everything schedule, you running here, you got, you can't be late to this, you can't be late to that. You film study, it's just a whole lot of time that you got to put in. So time management is something that you, you know, I would um, tell kids, like, get used to being on time to everything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Being on, like, if you five minutes early, you're late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, that type yeah, of thing. Right. And um, like I said, the biggest thing is just going in there confident in who you are and why you're here. It's a reason why you're there. So you're going to have pitfalls. You're going to have those things where you're questioning your athletic ability. You're questioning, do you want to be here? You you know, you're missing mom's cooking. You're yeah. missing, you know, so it's, it's a lot of things that go into it where you have to sit back and be like, listen, man, I'm here for a reason. They picked me for a reason. It might not be right here, but I'm going to keep working because they're going to see and they're going to know that they made a good choice on me. And that was kind of my story. Like, once I got redshirted, you know, it was just more so like, all right, I ain't playing this year, so I'm just going to kind of bull jive my way through. Man, I was, I had blew up to 217 pounds, still the same height, never had been that weight before, just felt sluggish, you know, and felt, you know, just kind of like, I was just, like I was on the team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my my coach, Billy Height, I'll never forget it. He, he came to me and he was just like, you know, is this what you really want to do with your career? I mean, no, you're not playing right now, but we look at everything, you know? So what I did was, I, I thought about that thing, so, I just started being a scout team hero. Yeah. They had when we played different teams. I'm like, let me be the man. I was Donovan McNabb one year because they yeah. knew I, you know, that's when Syracuse ran the option and all that stuff. So uh-huh. I'm out there with my five jerseys, uh, spatted cleats. You know, I'm playing the whole role, you uh-huh. know. So I just started giving defenses good looks and stuff like that. That summer I came back, reconstructed my body. I got back down to like 178, 180, which is my playing weight. All my times went through the roof. My, my weightlifting stuff went through the roof. Um, and, you know, I got on special teams because we had some great backs. Um, Ken Oxendine, Lamont Piggy, Sharon Stiff. I mean, we had Marcus Parker. We had some yeah. great backs. Brian Netman's God Bless the Dead Poons. That was the – he pulled me in um, under his wing. And, you know, he, he told me what it was about to be a college football player, man. And um, the whole time it's just like you you out there and everything. And I, and I started taking things serious. I started winning special teams player of the week every week. I'm yeah. talking about I didn't care who we was playing. I was I was just, I'm going to get on this field one way or another. Yeah, you're going to so, do something. Yeah. yeah, and then finally my shot came. And then, you know, once my shot came, I um, led the Big East in um, uh, yards per carry one year. Um, I had the squat record at Tech. Well, I had the Big East record, uh, the bill, uh, excuse me. I had the Big East I had led the um, Big East in uh, yards per carry. I had a Virginia Tech record for yards per carry. It's still 20 years. It uh, got broke the same year my son broke all my records at Glass. So, gotcha. you know, I made my mark. I made my mark on there, and, you know, I was feeling good about myself. 
you know, feeling good about my opportunities and things of that nature. So, you know, once we got, you know, once all that stuff went in, you know, I had, like I said, I had the squat record attack for a little while. So I, I, I flipped the switch. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, those are the way, you know, things started to develop for me. And, you know, I just went in. And then it just gets to once you get as a senior, and, you know, it's almost your last hoover. And then things started to change a little bit. Um, but, yeah. Okay. So you at Tech, I know you and Vic, you know, developed a relationship. Could yeah. you Could you talk about that and, like, how that relationship formed, how you guys pushed one another? Oh, yeah, but first of all, I tell everybody, everybody like, oh, he played with Vic. I'm like, nah, Vic played with me. I was there first, established myself, you know. But, <laughs> yeah. but at the end of the day, no, nah, Mike was a, uh, man, that, that guy was phenomenal. It was just like God put together a quarterback that he wanted. I mean, Mike was a, uh, I'll tell you a story. We, Virginia Tech, we come in to the freshmen. They always came in three or four days earlier than us. And, you know, we didn't work all summer, so we ain't going back to that field until it's time for us. Yeah. But, man, I'll never forget how Ike Charlton came back. When, no, I'll never forget this. Let's go, let's go back. We was in practice but the year before Mike came to Tech. And Ricky Bustle, which was my offensive coordinator, you know, at the time, Ronald Curry was the man. Yeah. And I'm like, um, Coach, y'all going off for of Ron C? He was like, nah, it's a guy down there that's better. His name Mike Vick. I'm like, Coach, you cow, you, you tripping, yo. You know, you don't like to stop it, man. Ronnie yeah. Curry might be go down as probably the best high school football player in Virginia. That, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. if you look at his accolades and everything like that. So he was like, watch what I tell you, short S H I T. You know, because that's what they, you know what I mean? And that was his type of relationship. Yeah. But he was like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I said, all right. So we was all sitting there. We had already finished our workouts and everything. Ike Charlton coming in there was like, yo, y'all gotta come see this dude. So we like, all right. So we go down there. And then mind you, these are all freshmen. And they was in a pass scale drill. And I think the guy ran a 15 yard out. And Mike threw that thing, man. And I'm talking about when he put it, when he put it on him, all of us looked at each other and walked away and said, we went in the national championship. Yeah. Just because, you know, I mean, any 15 yard out the hottest route in the um yeah. it, though. And I'm talking about with smoke. Right on point. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, that's all that we needed to see. Everybody was like, we're going to win it. So, you know, he came along and, uh, you know, actually he just traveled with us that first year and stuff like that. And, you know, we kind of took him under our wing. I used to go pick him up from campus because they was living on campus, you know what I'm saying? Make sure they had what they need. Him and Ronnie L. Whitaker, they was my little guy, protégés that I kind of pulled under my yeah. wing and wanted to keep. And, um, yeah, he came through and – you know, we just developed that relationship, and after that, it just got bigger, bigger and better. You know, my mom, they used to come home with me. My mom used to cook for Thanksgiving because we, you know, I was the closest. So he loved my mama's roast. So you know, they, my family, fell in love with him and everything. And man, my senior year, we were roommates. You know, we were roommates at bowl games and stuff like that. And then it just developed into a relationship that continued on to this day. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, I remember watching the uh, Sugar Bowl. Yeah. I mean, I was a freshman. We had just played Heritage basketball. I'm like, man, I'm going to stay and catch the, uh, the varsity game. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I went home and watched, man. You really had a, a an, an outstanding game as running back, man. Yeah. I remember y'all was playing Peter Warg in the Seminoles. Oh, yeah. That, you when know, they had Chris <laughs> Winkie, yeah. Yeah, oh, they had that, everybody. Chris Winkie, Corey Simon. I was Simon, like, yo, Dre getting Paul, it in, Oh, man. man. They, they, and, you know, it, it's funny because, like, uh, this is the story I tell about that that game. Like, really, that wasn't my best game ever I had. And my best game ever I had was against Pitt. It was uh, 16 carries, 162 yards, no touchdowns, but it was just we was almost losing. Yeah. And it was kind of keying on my other running back and kind of shutting them out, and I just went off that night. Got the game ball. I think I was the Big East player of the week that week, something like that. But, um, yeah, the um, Sugar Bowl, though, man, it was just a, a combination of I wasn't ready as a freshman. My senior year in the state championship game, we going to play Ronald Carey and them. We was beating the brakes off teams. I think we played – I mean, our coach had got on TV and was like, we got to figure out a way to play our, our, our first team more. Because yeah. at the game, I mean, you got to think, my senior year, we come – we was beating the team so bad, we come out third quarter score, we in jackets for the rest of the day. Everybody else playing. Yeah. So, you know, it just got, came to the point where it was overconfident. Yeah. But the night before the the, the uh, state championship game, man, I'm in down in the pool with the cheerleaders. I mean, yeah. it's two o'clock in the morning just because <laughs> of the fact, like, I'm like, man, we we who we are. We're going to go out yeah. there. And it didn't turn out that way for me. And my dad just looked at me. I'm proud of you. But I knew what that look was. Yeah. You know, and that look was always be ready. So the night 
before the championship game, I sit there in the bathroom, steamed out, you know, just sitting there and there. I was sitting on the toilet. I was like, listen, this is what's going to happen. And I, yeah, I was like, we're going to go out here. I said, I'm going to go out here and have a good game. And so how, it was crazy because Sharon Stiff goes down. So now the onus is on me. Yeah. So, you know, I wasn't going to be the reason why we lost that yeah. game, man. And then just, it was just blessings. Yeah. You know, the Lord blessed me, put me in a position that I have a good game. And, yeah. you know, I like to, I like, I, it, it took me a long time to watch that game. Like, like years after for me to even watch the full game because we were so close, you know? And, yeah. you know, people talk about, you know, the experience. Okay. You know, your coach may, your coach or your team may have won 20 something games or something like that, but, to actually be in an atmosphere where it's for all the marbles, you know, that experience comes in. And you can tell Florida State had been there and we had. Yeah. But, you know, the guys, we went up. Guys put forth, um, you know, great effort. But uh, we got to be there what we did. You know, we got a plant blocked on us that was returned. You know, um, we, we faked the field goal, which is uncharacteristic of us, you know, because Shane Graham, man, he was the best in the business. You yeah. Know? When I was a freshman in high school, we, we both were same class. Freshman in high school, he kicked the 35-yarder to win the state championship. You know, Shane Graham, he kicked the 48-yarder with no time left to go to the national championship that same year. So he was money. He yeah. was clutch, you know, and, you know, we I think we got away from the things that who made us who we were. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that was the, the, the one of the reasons why we lost that game. Also, we, you know, Ricky Hall, which was our top receiver, well, you know, second behind Dre Davis, but Ricky Hall didn't play that game. He was a stud, man. And I think a lot of things would have changed with him there. Yeah. Because, and I think, you know, we scored that first opening drive. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. But, yeah. So, so how does all that, right? So you got your high school career, you know what I'm saying? You got your college career. Mm -hmm. So you got the love of sports, all these lessons. So now you got a son. Mm -hmm. So, so the cycle starts over. Could you, could you tell me about that? Like how, how excited were you? How, you know, did you want to kind of like, you know, stand off? Did you, you know, did you learn? <laughs> You yeah, know bro, what I'm saying? Because I, I know coaching my son, it was like, it was different. Working with him, I didn't want to be hovering over him. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100% because that, that was the biggest mistake of my life with my, my first son. That's one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. You know, my first son, you know, he played running back when he was in high, and when he was in um, Little League. And my thing was, I'm not going to bother him because I didn't want me to overshadow who he was. So yeah. I let other people coach him. You know, and it got to the point where you know, he didn't really, you know, he kind of got away from it because he, I, and, and I don't know the reasoning. It could be because I didn't give him that, mm -hmm. but I don't, I really don't know. But I just wanted to be standoff and just kind of critique from the back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that was the biggest mistake of my life. So with the next son that came through, you know, he was my guinea pig on everything, on my training, on the philosophy I mean, he was the one. Yeah. You know, so I said, I won't make that mistake again. And, and what I did was, is like I said, the stuff that you see now, it's a little bit more vamped. Yeah. Um, a little bit different. But he was the guinea pig to that. You know, him and a couple of other uh, guys um, that when I started the elite, you know, they was the guinea pig. But me and Dre Sean, you know, and DeAndre too. You know, I give Dre, DeAndre just as much credit yeah. for Dre Sean's success because Dre, DeAndre was out there with him. You know, working, toughening them up, doing all those little things a big brother's supposed to do yeah. subconsciously, not even knowing that he was doing it, but like he was his brother's biggest fan too. Yeah. You know, his mom, his brother, you know, they, his, his biggest fans, you know? Yeah. I'm more so like, you know, I love you to death, you know, and we made a decision, a conscious decision a long time ago. And I was like, listen, bro, I'm always going to be your dad. I love you to death. I don't care if you pitch your marbles, I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to do, if you want to get to that next level with the, and, and, and you want to live out these dreams that you're talking about, this is what we can do. Now, I can either just be your dad and a supporter, or I can be your dad and your trainer. And I said, it's up to you. You accept it. Either way, go, I'm going to love you. You know how you want it. He was like, Pops, I'm, I'm, hey, let's go. And, I mean, he, I look at stuff on the field and just be like, Dad, we did that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's what we did. And, yeah. and you know, Right, quite naturally, you know, he followed in my footsteps, broke all my records at uh, a glass and stuff. Um, some of the passing records, which was bro broke by George White this year, which yeah. shout out to George White, you know, one of the kids that I trained. So, um, yeah, he came in and broke all the records, and man, he dominated. And look at him sitting as a fan, 
You know, as a dad, Craig Natch, I don't care what you do. You, yeah. you catch one pass, you, yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah. But to dominate in the fashion that he did and, you know, just – I mean, it was different because, like, I mean, he just, I mean, he he did everything. He was calm, cool, collective, like nothing bothered him. Mm-hmm. Like, he couldn't get rattled. Like, I've never seen him to the point where he's rattled. Yeah. Like, where nothing. I mean, we was in the championship game, you know, even a little when we was playing in the national. Like, he was the national player of the year one year. And, and we didn't even win the national championship. That's how big he played. You know, it's just, you know, he, he make a mistake. He'll come over there, back pops, give it, let's go, let's go back right here. I got this right here. Boom. Touchdown. I'm like, all started. I never forget it. This one I knew that he was cerebral mm-hmm. and he understood what was going on. Is just because we was playing in the championship game. It was a Roanoke team. We was playing in the Hills. Well, I think it was a Hill City back then, something like that. But uh-huh. playing in the championship game, man. And this team had beat us. Had beat us in the regular season twice. Uh-huh. So we beat him in the We had the championship game. And I never forget it. It was fourth, we were like on the three yard line. And I had been running the play um pass. So they shifted everybody. And I saw when he raised up and he went back down. And man, he ran a quarterback audible, this own audible. <laughs> yeah. Quarterback sneak touchdown win. He came to the sideline. I'm like, what's like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. He was like, what? I said, what you he said, man, everybody shifted over. I read back so-. I said, you know what? You got it. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a proud moment, man. Oh, Especially no when you're teaching, and you know that they're taking it to in. see it. Yeah, to see it come to fruition, the things that you put into place, and to be, and to see that that they understand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because like I, I to preach to them. It's every every. I mean, and I give all the kids that I train the same type of training, the same thing things I gave Dre Sean. It's like, though, this is what it is, man. And he ran with it. Yeah, and I love to see that, man, because I think. Being being an athlete, sometimes you can overcompensate for what you don't know. Absolutely, because you don't know the game, you don't understand it, you don't know how to read coverages. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You don't know um, your 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 assignment in the field, so your speed can always overcompensate. Yeah, and then you see as kids kind of funnel out as they get older. Yep, because they never became a student of the game. So I I love to see that kids watch film and actually know what's what's going on and give them the edge. Yep, see what it is now, and and, and, I, and it's been this forever. I mean. <clears throat> Everybody in little league, everybody they can get the ball to that fastest guy, let them outrun everybody. That's not what we did in the league. We taught the kids to run between the tackles because at the end of the day, the uh, fastest point from A to B is a straight line. Yeah. And not only that, it gets you used to having to navigate through people yep. instead of just trying to outrun people. Because guess what? When you get older, and I've seen it happen time and time, of speedsters. Yeah. They never panned out in, in, in high school just because they was not used to going in between those tackles. And when they had to go between mm-hmm. the tackles, it wasn't a good thing for them, you know, yep. and they, they weren't comfortable with it. So, you know, everybody that I trained coming up and we coached coming up, you know, we always made that a point. Let's get them in. We're going to run these plays inside. Yep. And once you put, once you break the, uh, once you break them linebackers, that's when your speed can come on. But, you know, and, and that's one thing that, you know, I, I kind of like look at like some of the youth teams today and, you know, throughout the years, man, I don't see a lot of that. I'm, no, you don't. I, I see a lot of just everybody trying to smoke somebody to the sideline. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. all they do, man, is yep. run to the wide side of the yeah, field. Yeah, and that, yeah. That, that, don't, that don't teach, I mean, that just teach you to be fast. Now what, now what do you do when your speed is negated by somebody with yeah. those types, that type of speed just up? It's a psychological thing. It is. Dog, I've been smoking everybody all my life. Now yeah. I can't even get away. Yep. So now you see them tunnel, you see them funnel out and just fizz out because, yeah. you know, there's nothing that they can do because their skill set doesn't um, – their skill set doesn't allow them to be that person. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy you say that because I remember coaching and I remember running the offense, um, 11 to 12-year-olds. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I'm going to run the power wide, but I'm going to teach them how to, you know, read the hole. Absolutely. You know, I ran the, the right, two. eyes on the left. <laughs> They was criticizing because when the kids was coming up, they knew like animals and numbers. So they didn't understand a dive. They didn't understand the lead block. Yeah. 21. So they didn't understand like, you know, a running back having a number going into a hole. Yeah. And then the linemen, they didn't know how to block. They didn't know how to pull. They didn't know how to, you know, if I'm uncovered, go go to the next level. And I'm like, man, we failing these kids because when yeah. they get to middle school, it's it's, it's me kids that's not better than them. They just know the game. That's it. That's it. And I'm going to tell you, and that's one thing about, you know, the elite staff, when we had elite going on, like our staff, me in particular, I know I had every type of offense you can think of. Yeah. And it was, and I did that because 
when you get to the next level, I want you to be able, when somebody tell you, well, what's a spread? What's a power out? What's this? What's It's not foreign to yep, you. Yep. You know what it is. And getting back to your point, I ran the power out. You know, and the thing about it is I, I worked it. I taught these kids and our staff taught these kids how to kick out, push, and get to the next. Yep. We taught them all that young. Yep. So once your body develops, your footwork develops, your mind develops, this stuff is second nature yeah, to you. It's muscle nature. memory. you used to doing yep. that stuff, man. And my thing is, I, these no disrespect because at the end of the day, you you volunteering your time. Yep. But let's don't be detrimental because, you know, you come in trying to run all these – Madden plays and defenses mm-hmm. and stuff. That's real football. Yeah. But these kids need to develop. They need the fundamentals. Yep. Then let's progress. Yeah, build and, on it. Yep, because every 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 time you put something out there, you, you build another piece. Yep. Every time you show them something, you, you show them why you're doing it. This is why you're doing it. This yep. is why you're kicking this guy out. You got to give them the why. You can't just go out there and tell them to do it, and if they don't do it, go crazy. Okay? Yeah. Can't do that. Yeah, you're you right, know? man. Yeah, you're right, because I think a lot of kids – that's that's where they reach that level of frustration. Where Absolutely. You see, yo, like, yo, what happened to this kid? He he don't play anymore. He was it was just juiced out of. Yep, juiced. And, and and some coaches do that. You know, and you know they 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 take the fun out the game for the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, they. I mean, they you you got to be. It's a certain discipline you got to have, no yeah. doubt. But it's a way you do it. Exactly. And one thing that our staff did, and we, it was a rule. If you bury that kid right there, somebody within seconds need to be coming to lift him up. Yep. Because. We're getting on you for a reason because it's warranted to, for us to get on you. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we're going to bring you back. We ain't going to let you fall in that slumber. You know, we're not yeah. going to let you fall down like that. And, man, I'm just proud because phew, you got to think, like, we got state championship teams mm-hmm. that that came from our program. Like, yeah. hey, we gave them, like, three years straight of uh, dogs. Like, and, you yeah. know, and then, you know, Appomattox with Trey and – um. Uh, Trey Lauren and um, Purvis yeah. and, and them guys like so these guys that was in the program was winning big you yeah. know and you know Drayshawn and Bam and Horse and Jarrell and all those other guys that came to Glass Glass went from going zero on ten I mean one in ten nine yeah. to when they Drayshawn and them left getting robbed and in some games you know yeah. so they're going eleven two so I mean. Shout out to the elite squad. Them, I mean, you know, coaches and, and even the parents and things like, you know, the, the administrative team. And we had the best interest in the heart for them kids. And we've had them kids. Them kids were prepared. Yeah. That's why when they was out there, big games didn't mean nothing to them because they've been playing in big games all their yeah, life. They, they go to life. Florida every year and, and, and never finish less than third, I mean, fourth place. And we and we talking about before it was watered down. We talking about the team from Vegas with 134 straight wins. We talking yeah. about um, the team from Florida, um, coached by former Liberty standout and Pittsburgh yeah. still Eric Green. We talking about teams that, that's on 64 game winning streaks. We go down there and break them. I mean, we we really represented. You yeah. know what I'm saying? This was before you know anybody was traveling and stuff. There was something we knew we introduced, man. And you look at what they did back then. And what they did, like, I watch my guys. I yeah. go to my guy. I watch and see, and it was, okay, it's another game. I mean, yep. it, it may be big to some of y'all, yeah. but this is what we used to. Yeah, and we and we appreciate that sacrifice as a community because I think what it does, it created a platform for our kids around the small areas Absolutely. that didn't exist. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want D-man, it's hard for them to get that notoriety. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think by yeah. you guys – Investing that time, taking them and traveling, not 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 only did it give them the experience, but it gave them that 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 that, that exposure. Showed them that's, that the world that's, is that's bigger needed. than Lynchburg, Virginia, mm-hmm. and you can compete at the highest level. Yeah. And once you get that, once you get a kid seeing that he can compete with us, all these five stars and all this stuff like that, and like the only difference between me and him, he might be a couple of inches taller than me. That, that's the belief. It's the yeah. belief, the confidence in yourself. Once you got that, bro. Yeah, and you, you see, it. and you put that work in, mm-hmm. and the confidence come in, nothing rattles you. Now, if somebody beats you just because they better, that's fine. Yeah. But you ain't seeing nobody playing bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because these kids were used to that. Yeah, they won. These kids were dominant. Like, you know, shout out again. Shout out to the elite team. And we got, this year, add on, we got 38, no, 42 kids that's either played college football or college, some type of college sport. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and you got to think, our first senior class – was since 2010, and we got 42 kids that's been in college. And this year is what? 
12, I think it's moved to 12 or 13 kids that were, that were player of the year. Yeah. You know, either in the conference, state, region, like that, the kids that we work with. These kids were actual player of the years. For rosters full of, I mean, pretty much 90% of the kids that played with us was a first team district, first team region, first team state. That's what's all up, man. player of the year. And remember, I'm, I, I'm proud of that. Yeah. You know, because it wasn't just me. We had a great staff all the way down to the administration. I mean, and the thing I, I, I'm proud about is that we put these kids in position and gave them those tools mm-hmm. for when they got to high school. We're going to yeah. give you this ready-made. All you got to do is learn what the coach's scheme is. You yeah. know, power, you know, spread, you know, trips, you know, everything. Yeah. And, you know, the defenses, you know how to play defenses, you know, responsibility, you know, all that stuff. And like I said, I pride it. I, we pride ourselves. I know I'm proud of it. Yeah. I mean, that we, we were able to put these type of kids where they needed to be. That's what's up, man. Um, so let's so let's switch gears a little bit. Okay. So, so you know, we got we got Dre All Star. You know, what I'm saying we got Youth League, we got EC Glass, we got Tech. So now let's talk about how what made you start the Drake and Talk? Because I love it, man. I love being able to if I'm at work <laughs> or busy, it's it's my way of tuning in and catching up with everything that's 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 going on. Yeah, man, it, it, it's it's weird because you know, um, I'll tell you a couple of things. I had been, you know, I had been talking to my mom. I was working at the bank, and you know, before my mom passed, you know, I was just sitting there, and your know, mom was always like, you know, she also bring me breakfast at mm-hmm. lunch. I mean, at work and stuff like that. Like I'm oh, mama's boy, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. But you know, and she, it was funny because she was like. Boy, you all you do it. You you need to you need to take that somewhere. You need to start talking. And so mm-hmm. I ain't pay no attention to yeah. nothing like that. And so, you know, I was sitting there. I, I looked one day, and I I looked at all the loans. I looked at the loans that I produced for us. You know, with the people. Mm-hmm. I looked how how much I made for the bank. Yeah. And what my paycheck looked like. And I was like, heck no, man. Yeah, this ain't man. It. And then my mom passed from COVID, and I'm like, that crushed me. I'm talking like, I was like, you know what? I went to the job. I ain't even give a two weeks notice. I said, man, I'm out of here. I'm not doing this. I need a break. I need to get away. So I moved to Florida. So I was down in Florida, got my thoughts together, met a young lady named Daniela. Shout out to Daniela. She was um, aspiring to be um, an influencer. Uh-huh. Um, you know, she did many talents. She could sing. She could dance. She can do, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, she was just like, Dre, you cool, man. Yo, you need to um, get you a show. It was just, yeah. and it was just like everybody kept saying you get a show. So yeah. my very first show was in Florida at my pool. Uh-huh. Yeah, at the pool by the cabana. And I was just sitting there and I was like, we're going to talk about boxing because this is when Floyd was, you know. Yeah, it was a yeah lot I remember of, seeing yeah, that when so, you were live, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I went yeah, live and yeah. we just, it was just an interaction or whatever, whatever. And I used to come back every, I used to come back every week to go to my son's games. You know what I'm saying? I used to fly back into Richmond every week. Mm-hmm. And, it was during football season, and the year bef- and that year I, I was that that before that year before football season started, mm-hmm. I gave a little preview of what I thought far as how it was gonna go down, and phew, quite not they it dropped just like everybody placed just like I said it would place. Yeah, and so I went up there to Glass and was just like I'm gonna go interview Woody, just mess around with Woody because you mm-hmm. know I go up there and mess with Woody. Woody was like, come back. It was good because, you, you know, I show me and Woody get on there, man. Yeah. Woody is a good guy, weirdo, but uh, he must <laughs> my guy. You know, funny as you want to yeah. be. You know, he just got that almost Seinfeld type humor, yeah. but he funny. And, you know, he was like, come back. So we kept coming back and kept mm-hmm. – and, and, you know, I just kept – like, it was just encouraging. And then I was like – then I was like, man, I'm going to go ahead and just start doing everybody because mm-hmm. my thing is this – Everybody know what it is with me in glass. Yeah. I don't care who the principal is. I don't care who the coach is. I don't care nothing about that. If it's that blue, Mm -hmm. that's what I'm about. I represent that blue. I represent that glass name, that building all the way to the butt. At the same time, you know, I think God put me in a position where I can help more kids. Yeah. And so that's why I never wanted to coach. You know, I coached at glass before. I coached at Sandusky. Several coaches' opportunities, but I never wanted to. I always wanted to be able to help everybody. Mm. And I'm not going to train you in the summer to beat me in the winter. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. So it got to the point where I was just like, you know, we just kept doing it and kept doing it. And people caught, you know, it just caught it. And then like, man, it just went crazy. 
Like, I ain't know anything about the algorithms to Facebook yeah. and how you it can be monetized. And, uh, and I'm just talking about the numbers just kept going up. Yeah. People kept being interested keep and just kept going up. And I just kept going to different places. And I kept doing things. And football season was over. I'm like, man, I like this. Mm -hmm. So I did basketball and I just continued to just kind of, you know, uplift the, the community, man. Because the 757, they got their own shows. And the 804, they got their own shows, yeah. you know. And, and, and shout out to Dave Walls. He does a great job, but it's just yeah. him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and my thing is, is um, it, it was more personal, you yeah. know, like. I'm quite not oh, we got your name here, blah, 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 blah. But now let's do something big for these yeah. kids. Let's 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 have an event for these kids. Let's give them an all, you know, because they had an all-region team, Seminole District, all that stuff. But my thing is, I did everybody in the current in, in the city and the surrounding county. So, you know, I Appomattox, yeah. you know, Gretna, you know, I, I did Buckingham. So I just did everybody, you know, in the city and surrounding counties. And then man, it's just people just start hitting and my numbers just start going up and I I just thoroughly love doing what I was I was yeah. doing, you know. So that's what's up, man. You know, and, and we here now. Yeah, and that's what's up with the passion, man. That's why, like, when I when I started this show, it was like, you know what? I want to build a a, a a stage that that become a platform for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So my platform become a stage to share your stories and other people's mm -hmm. stories. And what I love about that man is being that age. Mm -hmm. You want people to know more about you versus just being a football player. No doubt. And so I think what you do, man, is give an inside look at the program. Yeah. An inside look to the coach. And you help humanize them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Versus them just being a number every Friday or, or, yeah. or Saturday morning. And, and my biggest thing is this, man. I mean, you know, I have – I don't really have – I mean, I have some things that I don't agree with with some coaches. Some mm -hmm. coaches, you know, I don't really – you know. But – and, you know, it's vice versa. But – at the end of the day, my thing ain't for the coaches. Yeah. My purpose, my goal is those kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I respect a lot of uh, other coaches. And, you know, I like what a lot of coaches do. I, I, and some coaches, I don't like what they do. Yeah. But that's my opinion. That's how I feel about it. And if it's something I feel strongly about, I'm going to stand on. Yeah. You know, especially if it's a detriment to these kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, my, my biggest thing is, man, is letting these kids know that – Understand, everybody ain't gonna be in your corner always. They're gonna give use you for what they can use you uh -huh. for. Uh -huh. And when your eligibility up, dog, you're on your And those those are some of the things like far as, you know, pitfalls that and, and not all coaches are like that, you know what I'm saying? You know, and I only speak on what I know for a fact. Yeah. You know, what's been brought to me. Cause I talk to recruiters all the time. Dre, yeah. what you got down there? My, all my friends, I got friends, colleges, there's several colleges and coaches everywhere. They call me, what you got down there? Boom, mm -hmm. I send them this. Boom. Oh, go word. What's his SATs? Oh, let me get it for you. You know, and, and, and one thing that I, I, I really feel good about is that I got a strong enough connection with the kids yeah. and with the parents and with the community that. You know, I'm going to come to you as a respectfully of your program. Coach, yeah. is it okay if we do this? You know, we talked, I'm, Coach, I'm doing this with your kids. Okay. If you say yeah, great. If you say no, great. Because I don't need you. Yeah. I got to I can go straight to this horse. Yeah. I don't have to go through you. I don't yeah, have to go right. through no school. Or you don't want me on your property? Pull up over here to the scoreboard. Yep. Eat you some wings. Let's have this conversation. Yep. That's what it is. And, and I'm glad and I'm thankful that God put me in that position where, like I said, you know, these kids, they, they know who I am. And I think throughout the years, we've been proving that it, it ain't about me. I've been there. I've done that. I, my life was great. My, my career, I felt, was great. You know, I got a son that's doing it. I don't have to do this. I can yeah. ride my son. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that ain't what it is. That ain't what, that's not what community is about. Yeah. That's not what uplifting is about. You know, I, I made a post the other day, you know, about... Gina and uh, Pam from Martin. Yeah. They both was working in the telemarketing business. You know, one of them made it, brought a girl up, now they both eat. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about with me. I want to share that knowledge, and that's what I've been teaching my oldest son, my youngest son, to do is, man, give it back. Yeah, you got to give it back. Bro, you got a skill set. You might not be as vocal as me. You like yeah. your mama. You ain't going to say you want to observe everything. You know, but, you you know, you got a, a skill set where you can teach these. Like, dog, you can do this. And pour back into these kids, you know what I'm saying? And, and he's been doing a phenomenal job at that, you know. And with my oldest son, I, I'm like, yo, listen, it's your brother. Y'all put something together, man. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to have this. I'm going to leave you the yeah. blueprint. I'm going to put you on. You, we're going to have a business. Yeah. We're going to have an LLC. And when I'm gone, y'all got to run this thing. Yeah, you got to run it. And at the end of the day, like, bro, that's your brother. 
Keep it in the family. Do what you do. Put y'all put yourself in a position to make a difference. And if, once you start making a difference, all the blessings pour in. Yep. Because and, and especially when you're doing it from your heart. Yeah. Man, I don't get paid nothing. People throw, you know, people pay for sponsorships and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I got guys that we take care of, my, my camera crew. Yeah. Got guys, you know, we 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 donate funds, we do scholarship funds. We, you know, so it ain't like we making money. Yeah. <laughs> like that's just back. something that we love to do. Yeah. You know, my reward gonna be in heaven, hopefully. Yeah, you're right. You know, I don't Right. everything right you know I got some some BS with me sometime but that's just what it is yeah. you know what I'm saying I, but when I, I stand firm on it and one thing you can't it's nothing that you can say like mm-hmm. no it's, I'm genuine about what yeah. I'm doing you know what I'm saying because it's a, it's a vision it's the vision God gave me and he put me in a position I was going back and forth but it's always something that came up while you needed to be here yeah. that's my purpose this is what I'm here for Got you. And as you talk about that, right, so as so as, as we come to a close and you talk about your purpose, because that's mm-hmm. what I think if anybody's listening to this full interview, like he's operating in his purpose, he's using his talents and gifts to really pull back into where God put him in the position to do. Yeah. So if you could look at your camera mm-hmm. and just what what message would you have to give to anybody that's struggling or that has, that doesn't have that faith to just step into what they were called to do. Man, I, my message is this. If you believe in something, first of all, if you don't believe in it, who else is going to believe in it? You're right. You know, that's that's my, I, I, and I spoke at Gretna. I speak around a, a lot to a lot of different kids, athletes, non-athletes. But one thing about it is I'm not a mental health specialist. I've got common sense, mm-hmm. and I can help you get through some things. You know, I'm, I'm not a... Uh, What's the? I don't work in food services. I don't work in uh, family services. My lane is over here with the youth, whether it's sports or whether it's just ordinary Joes. Mm-hmm. You know that's 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 my lane. So I stay in my lane. But the, what I would tell people is like, be confident in yourself, believe in yourself. Cause, but at the end of the day, use haters or whatever as motivation. Yeah. Because I'm gonna tell you, I used to get so upset because I thought what we was trying to do was pure. Yeah. And you would think that people would love you doing that, and it took me to the point where you know, I used to get mad, like what? And I'm firing off at everything. Uh-huh. And I still fire off when I need to fire off. Yeah. But it's not like it used to be because I know I'm comfortable who I am. Yeah. Whether you like me or not, you know my purpose. It ain't yeah. about no money with me. It ain't about living through none of these kids. I got my own story to tell. My mm-hmm. son, I can tell my son's story. But man, be confident in yourself. Believe in yourself. Use that as that fuel, as that fire. Keep it moving. Like it's always some. It's it's so many ways to 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 be successful. And success ain't about money. But let's be real. We need money to function. They print it every day. Yeah. They print money every day. You can get to it. You can get to it. You, and, and right now with this social media thing, you got 16, 17-year-old kids, millionaires, just off social media. Yeah. You know, so my thing is believe in yourself, believe in your purpose, man, and just try to be good. And you ain't going to be good to everybody. Everybody ain't going to like you. But at the end of the day, if you get stuck on people not liking you or not liking what you're doing and trying to tear you down, that, that's taking away from your real goal. That's taking away from what you got to do. If I waste this five minutes on you trying to get on your back, or, or argue with you about something, that's five minutes I wasted for my ultimate goal. Yeah. And I had to start looking at it like that. Now, again, like I said, if I feel something, if I feel you take a shot, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to come back. I'm going to fire off on you, yeah. boom, boom, it's over, done with, I ain't thinking about it no more. Yeah. You know, you might think about it, but I ain't thinking yeah. about it. I got it off. You know where I'm coming from. Now yeah. I'm going to get back to this course. Yep. But, you know, it took a while to get to that. You know, yeah. it was times that I would be, you know, I'm going, we going at it for two hours. You yeah. know, I don't care. You know, this is what it is. But, you know, it's, 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 think about it is, man, the world is bigger than Lynchburg, Virginia. The world is bigger than Virginia, man. I like, and I just tell all the kids out there, man, see it. Mm-hmm. If it ain't what you want, once you get out there, you always got home to come back to. You know, be confident in what you're doing. Be purposeful. You know, like, have a purpose for what you're doing. You know, and that's, that's, that's it. You know, once all the glitz and glamour and all that stuff is gone, mm-hmm. you know, you still got to live your life. Got to. You got to fall back on something. So, yep. man, just, I tell people, uh, the kids too, like, hey, I think the saying is, if you shoot for the moon and you don't make it, you land in the stars. You're yeah. still in a good situation. Let's, let's, let's take it to the limit all the way up. Let's go as far as we can go. And if we work hard, hard, hard and we don't make it, we're going to fall to somewhere where we're comfortable yep. at. So. That's, what That's what's up, man. And Dre, we appreciate you coming through no on the brand just to share your wisdom, share your stories. Um, and we appreciate just his story. Like he said, you know, push yourself to the limit. You know, use your use your potential. Believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to do it. 
That's your number one job, right? Absolutely. Let go of what people are thinking right. about you. The fact that me and Dre are here and, and we put ourselves out there on 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 social media. You know, a lot of people may talk about us or, or have their opinions, but it's not going to stop what we do. Not a and chance. It's, and it's not going to stop why we do it. Not and I a think chance. Once your why is big enough, right? Like Dre's doing it for the kids. I'm doing it to to help other people build a platform. If your why is big enough, then that'll overshadow any doubt, any hurdles, or any haters, right? Yeah. So I appreciate you, man, coming you. through. Yes, appreciate sir. you coming yes, through. Um, so like I said, guys, that, that is the end of the show. Keep it real. Keep it healthy. And as I always say, one love, but it's your choice to be blessed.